Hi, and welcome to Standard Precautions and Beyond, Conversations in Infection Prevention and Control, a podcast from the Alabama Regional Center for Infection Prevention and Control Training and Technical Assistance Center, or ARC-IPC. My name is Elena Kidd, and I'm a program director at the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Public Health. The coronavirus isn't the only infectious disease making headlines in 2022. From early May 2022 to June 13, 2022, the date of this podcast recording, over 1,300 confirmed cases of monkeypox have been reported across 31 countries that normally don't see any cases of monkeypox, including the United States. And a link to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's 2022 global map showing the outbreak is included in the podcast description. Monkeypox is a rare disease caused by an infection with monkeypox virus. It was first discovered in 1958 when two outbreaks of a pox-like disease occurred in colonies of monkeys kept for research, hence the name monkeypox. The first human case of monkeypox was recorded in 1970 in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and monkeypox is considered to be endemic in several countries in West and Central Africa. Occasionally, outbreaks have occurred outside Africa, but in most cases, these cases were associated with international travel or contact with individuals or animals from endemic regions. However, during the current 2022 outbreak, the CDC and World Health Organization are tracking multiple reported cases and monitoring several persons of interest in countries without endemic monkeypox and with no known travel links to an endemic area. In today's podcast, we welcome back Dr. Rachel Lee, Associate Professor in the UAB Division of Infectious Diseases and UAB Health Epidemiologist to talk to us about monkeypox, what it is, and if we should be worried. Welcome back, Dr. Lee. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I guess first, can you tell us a little bit more about the monkeypox virus, what it is, and how it's related to other pox viruses that people may be more familiar with, like smallpox? Yeah, so the pox virus is a large family of viruses, and it includes human viruses like smallpox, molluscum contagiosum, which is commonly seen in children, Um, And some viruses that infect animals naturally, but then can cause incidental infections in humans. And this is what's known as zoonosis, and that's where monkeypox falls. So we first started seeing and hearing about these in 18th century England, where smallpox accounted for anywhere from 7 to 12 percent of all the deaths, um, and deaths of of one-third of children. But through the grace of not-so-modern medicine with the first live virus vaccine in 1796, we were able to eradicate smallpox by 1980. Um, So just a little bit about pox viruses. They are the largest, most complex viruses. Typically, after being inhaled, these viruses can replicate in our upper respiratory tract. Then they travel to our lymph nodes and then inoculate our skin, and that's what causes that characteristic pox. With monkeypox, this is a disease that's very similar to smallpox, but it's less severe symptoms. Um, And typically, we've seen cases in Central and West Africa. Despite its name, monkeypox are actually not the main reservoir, um, or monkeys are not the main reservoir of monkeypox. It's actually rodents. Um, And prior to this outbreak that you're hearing about now, monkeypox outbreaks were very rare outside of Africa. The last large one in the United States was due to someone purchasing prairie dog pets that had been in contact with Gambian giant rats. And then this led to over 70 cases of of monkeypox in the United States. And so how long after someone becomes exposed to monkeypox does it take for symptoms to appear? So typically that incubation period is anywhere from 6 to 13 days, but it can range to as early as 5 days to as long as 21 days. And you typically have two periods. So you have what's called the invasion period. So that's when you get fever, headache, lymph node swelling, and back pain. And then you get the skin eruption, which typically happens one to three days after fever. The rash can be fluid-filled, and then they crust over and fall off. And so this is a very self-limited disease, typically, and symptoms last anywhere from two to four weeks. And so how does someone catch monkeypox, and how does it spread? So human-to-human transmission can occur through close contact with respiratory secretions or the skin lesions of an infected person or recently contaminated objects. So think, you know, bed linens, etc. Classically, it was thought that smallpox came in through the respiratory tract, whereas other pox viruses happen with direct contact of infected fluid. But this outbreak is definitely questioning our knowledge of transmission particularly given the longest documented chain of transmission was six to nine people. Let's talk about the current outbreak. What do scientists know and what do we not know about the source and spread of the current outbreak? 
So we first started hearing this in, on May 7th when the world was alerted to a confirmed case of monkeypox in the United Kingdom. And now as of June 8th, which I think some of these numbers have been updated, we're up to 1,285 confirmed cases. I think I heard numbers up to 1,500 as of this week. Um, majority of these cases are actually in Europe, and so clinical presentation is not that classical presentation I just discussed, but it have been pretty variable. Some people don't have that classic prodrome of fever, back pain, lymph node swelling. And then some have only had just a few lesions or a single lesion or a lesion that began in the genital and per perineal region. And so we're still trying to understand maybe some of these cases were missed, and that's why we've started to see as many cases as we have, because we've been kind of clued in to start looking for monkeypox. And so early data attained by the CDC and the WHO suggested that gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men made up a high number of cases. What is the relevance of that data, and what does it reflect in terms of person-to-person -person community spread, and who may be more likely to become infected? So we're still trying to understand this, how this outbreak is different from other outbreaks, but the key point here is that monkeypox is spread through close, sustained skin-to-skin -skin contact. So if we think about some of those patients we were mentioning earlier, if you have one lesion that may be on your genital region, you may not realize um, that you are infectious, and if you have sex, then that can transmit to another person. Um, and so the high proportion of these initial cases diagnosed in this outbreak were are in people who identify as gay, bisexual, or men who have sex with men. Um, and that may be just an early introduction of monkeypox into some social networks. Um, this also may be that people were not recognizing um, monkeypox as a potential pathogen that could be causing this, and so they could have thought that they had other sexually transmitted infections and, and misdiagnosed. I think we still have a lot to learn about this um, transmission and whether or not it's purely through sexual transmission versus close contact with fluids. So I think we'll hear more in the coming weeks about what we can get from this. And so I've, uh, kind of changing the topic now to, to ways to prevent the spread of monkeypox, I've read that there is not a specific vaccine for monkeypox, but the smallpox vaccine can be given before and immediately after exposure to offer some type of protection against the virus. Can you talk about these vaccines? And at the moment, is there a need for a max vaccination campaign in the U.S.? So we know that the smallpox vaccine is about 85% effective in preventing monkeypox. Um, and we stopped our um, um, prevention efforts for, monk, uh, for smallpox back in, I think, 1980. Um, and so some people in the United States have had smallpox vaccination, and so therefore you are protected against monkeypox. The U.S. FDA has approved a live attenuated vaccine known as Geneos, and that protects against infection in smallpox and monkeypox. And what you are describing is something called ring vaccination. So if you have someone who has monkeypox, and this has happened in Ebola as well, then if you can vaccinate everybody in that circle that's connected to that person um, in sort of a ring vaccination, that may prevent transmission events going further down. Um, and so that's the thought process here. So if you have a patient that is diagnosed with monkeypox, you know, we reach out to the CDC and then say, hey, can we get vaccination um, for these close contacts? Right now, in terms of, um, of the number of cases and how many vaccines we have available, I think that's the best way that, we, that the United States is focusing on that vaccination process. They are also working to try to get people vaccinated who are at high risk of exposure. So if you're a, a lab worker or you are potentially a frontline worker that may get exposed to monkeypox during care. Um, so I think we'll have more data coming soon. And so other than vaccinations, um, for those that you know may be exposed because someone else has monkeypox, what's the best way to prevent the future transmission? So we do know that it transmits through respiratory droplets. So masking right now works incredibly well for the general public. Um, and that's why the CDC has recommended, um, you know, heightened awareness and wearing masks, when, especially when you're traveling internationally. Um, the other way is to know if your patient, um, um, if you are in close contact with someone that may have symptoms of monkeypox, um, to not to have sex and to avoid um, contact with those lesions. Um, and then potentially in the future, you know, we'll look at more vaccination. Um, but I think right now for the general public, 
we probably will not be vaccinating everyone. Well, that is good to hear. And so for healthcare providers, what do they need to know about monkeypox? What's important for them to kind of keep in mind as the um, outbreak evolves? So I, I do know that the CDC has a wealth of information for healthcare providers as well as the WHO. Um, and then depending on your state, your state health department has information regarding how to exactly obtain um, a, a sample, how to get it to the CDC to then run tests. Um, and so every um, healthcare provider, if they are concerned that they have an infection, they should reach out to their local health department. Um, and then that will help determine what to do um, for diagnosing that patient. And we'll include links to both CDC, WHO, and also our state's health department in the description of the podcast. And so finally, what does the public need to know about monkeypox? What's the risk to the general public? Will the monkeypox be the next pandemic? So do I think that monkeypox is the next new pandemic? No, but I think what we are seeing here is how viruses can rapidly change and challenge our current understanding of transmission and prevention. I think a key for anyone is to know your risks, whether it be occupational or personal or travel related, and to find sound sources that can provide knowledge and insight, such as ARC IPC. You know, we have a lot of information on that website to really get you to the best information to help protect you. Thank you so much. That is all the time we have for today. We want to thank Dr. Lee for being here to share this valuable information about monkeypox and your insights on the current outbreak. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our listeners. Please tune in next time for another episode of Standard Precautions and Beyond, Conversations in Infection Prevention and Control. 